Assalamu alaikum peace be upon you welcome to a new episode of consider islam bismillah alhamdulillah assalamu alaikum peace be unto you this is the same greeting that jesus peace be upon him he greeted his followers with moses abraham and all the messengers of god and we're greeting you with that same greeting here today on the dean show peace we wish the best for everybody now there have been some misinformation some mistruths associated with this beautiful way of life the same way of life of all the messengers of god that complete and total adherence submission to the one who created you it's a very beautiful way of life so today my next guest is going to help clear up some of these misconceptions is going to help tackle some of the mistruths that are out there so you can get a better picture about this beautiful way of life the way of life as i said that jesus practiced abraham noah that way of life that tells you what the purpose of life is where you're going when you die gives you peace and contentment gives you success not only in this life but in the next my next guest here on the dean show sheikh khalid yasin peace be unto you assalamu alaikum alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh now most people they know who you are sheikh khalid yasin can you just for a minute for those of our non-muslim the not yet muslims who are out there viewing this and we really cater to them we really want them to get a better picture of the beautiful way of life that we live and to share this beautiful message of peace with the world so you've been um, out there lecturing people uh, uh, delivering the, the the message of the purpose of life you used to be a for former Christian is this true that's correct yeah and and you are still following the way of Jesus is this right absolutely H how is that is that is that a, a, am I twisting the truth or is this 100% no. the truth uh, Jesus Jesus uh, was uh, was not um, uh, Jesus didn't appoint himself uh, uh, Jesus uh, did not worship himself. Uh, Jesus was following the mandate of the Creator. He said, um, if anybody wants to go to the Bible, he says, uh, uh, um, I can of my own self do nothing. But whatsoever I'm ordered to do from the Most High, uh, that is what I do. So uh, this best personifies the position of Jesus Christ as a prophet and a messenger. And so it's his values. It's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the values of his mission and his message uh, uh, that we are still uh, uh, affirm, confirming and uh, attesting to uh, as Muslims. And uh, he was one of those who submit to Almighty God, who had the ultimate submission. And so, uh, and before him, John the Baptist, and uh, before him, Solomon and David and all the other prophets of God, they all submitted, not to themselves, but to the Creator. So in that sense, uh, I took the best values uh, out of the faith system called Christianity, and I've retained those values as a Muslim, but we went to another level. It's like going from high school to university. If a high school student didn't know about the university, they would probably be very grateful to have a high school diploma. But if they knew about the university and the benefits that come from graduating from the university, everybody will go and would go. So uh, that's the kind of way that we see ourselves. We, we feel, feel ourselves to be uh, fortunate by Almighty God to have been selected or chosen or exposed to Islam. Uh, and as such, we took the best out of the Christian uh, system and, and we're Muslims. M misconceptions, and we want to clear this because hopefully God willing, then there'll be less Islamophobia. It seems to be on the rise yes. and education I think is key. And this is how then we can start to develop true tolerance and understanding. And this is what the Dean Show is about, trying to yes. help people understand the most misunderstood way of life out there yet it's phenomenal that it's the fastest growing way of life out there today so one of the misconceptions was we just covered right off the bat we greeted each other with peace that's the same greeting that Jesus greeted his followers with and we just said that Jesus was a Muslim he submitted his will to God that's what we do and some people say you know these people are the Antichrist how would you address this well first of all um, uh, you know, that's a very subjective statement uh, that people make because somebody else has branded that and they're just repeating that. Um, but Jesus was the Messiah. That is, he was appointed by God. Uh, Jesus was the son of Mary. Uh, and that made him, he was born of the womb. Uh, of course, he had a phenomenal birth. Nobody has any doubt about that. You know, that uh, there was no earthly father for Jesus Christ. And we also acknowledge that also. Uh, but Jesus submitted himself to God. He prostrated the same way we prostrated. He wasn't prostrating to himself. So uh, there's a lot of misconceptions. And to be anti-Christ uh, is only a philosophical terminology that has come recently. Jesus uh, was not a Christian. Jesus was the Messiah. 
So Christianity was something that Constantine came up with to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to create a uniqueness uh, and a, a special determination of citizenship. You know, the, uh, the people who followed Jesus Christ were called Nazarenes. That is, he was Jesus of Nazareth because his message started out in Nazareth. So those who followed him from Nazareth along those different paths and roads were called Nazarenes. Now, Nazarenes didn't call themselves Christians, but when Constantine, a pagan emperor, when he adopted Christianity, he forced the name Christianity to distinguish himself from the people that followed him. It's a historical thing that we need to look into, um, but uh, no, we're not Antichrist. In fact, we are the people that personify we love Jesus Christ, we support Jesus Christ as Muslims within the faith of Islam. And the name of Jesus Christ is mentioned more in the Quran than the name of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Amazing, amazing. These are facts, not fiction. That's correct. Terrorism, synonymous a lot of times with Islam. So you say, as soon as you say Muslim, people put terrorism after that. What do you got to say mm. about this shit? Well, you know, the word terrorism, if you go back uh, in, the, uh, in the dictionaries, whether it's uh, Merriam-Webster, Funk and Wagnall, uh, you know, or the um, uh, Harvard Dictionary, Columbia Dictionary, uh, you'll find that uh, 50 years ago, uh, the word terrorism had a totally different name, uh, a totally different definition. But after 1948, the word terrorism, the first time that Muslims were called terrorists was in 1948. So what happened in 1948? That was the criminal invasion into Palestine, the criminal occupation of Palestine. And when the Palestinians began to defend their country uh, as freedom fighters, they were labeled as terrorists. So from that time until now, Muslims, the word terrorism, fanaticism, has become synonymous uh, uh, with being uh, uh, with Muslims. Well, that's just the multimedia. Uh, that's, the, that's like the, uh, the, the kettle calling the, the pot black. Okay, but if we look at history, uh, I mean, especially in the last 500 years, what countries have personified the word terrorism? That is, intrusion into other people's lands, slaughtering people, displacing people, uh, traumatizing people. That's what the word terrorism means. Okay, so who has done that? Well, it's the British, it's the French, it's the Germans, it's the Americans, it's the conquistadors, and all those kinds of people who have been uh, uh, intruding into people's lands, uh, spoiling and snatching people's uh, natural resources, uh, displacing people, um, and taking advantage of people. And so that's terrorism. So I would say that uh, the 43 million people who have been displaced uh, by this kind of terrorism uh, in the last 500 years. Uh, it goes to say that uh, sometimes the people who call people terrorists are really the ones who are spreading uh, uh, historically terrorism. Uh, the second thing is that uh, Muslims are called terrorists only because uh, people want to demonize them, dehumanize them, and marginalize them. Because when you've been dehumanized, uh, you can do anything to a person if they're dehumanized. You see, if you want to demonize people, make them seem like evil, then it means that whatever good they do, people don't, uh, would trivialize it. And if you marginalize people, it doesn't matter what you do to them because they seem to be trivial. So this is what's happening with, uh, with Islam. But you know, God has his plan and people have their plan. And the plan of God always wins. Why is our news media foaming at the mouth when it comes to stories about Islamic terrorists but not white guy terrorists. It's not because Muslims are a bigger threat. In fact, between 1980 and 2005, 94% of all the attempted or successful terrorist attacks on U.S. soil were not carried out by Islamic radicals, but instead by non-Muslims, mostly white guys. So then why the obsession? Back here on the Dean Show, and we're trying to clear up many of the misconceptions so God willing, there'll be less Islamophobia because Islam isn't anything that people should fear, is it? Should people, I mean, fear, this is the way of life that God Almighty wants human beings to live. I mean, to acquire peace, we're all looking for peace and you can't buy a six pack of peace, you have to go to the owner of peace. So this is that, that way of life that we're living and we're trying to share with others. But unfortunately, there's some mistruths, some misconceptions associated and I just want to touch upon this point before we go to the next, continuing on with this terrorism. Does Islam condone, does it condone actions such as 9-11? Because you, usually when you bring up terrorism, people start to think about the Twin Towers and you recently had the New York subway bomber. Does this have anything to do with Islam, Shay? No, it has nothing to do with Islam, and, uh, but we have to be honest. 
that uh, perhaps in some of these cases we can clearly see that there may have been some Muslims either directly or indirectly involved. But Islam and Muslims is not the same. You got separated too? Yeah, ex exactly. Okay. Uh, uh, Islam is the faith system that is perfect and complete coming from God based upon scripture and revelation. Uh, Muslims are those who make the claim uh, to represent that. But, you know, when people uh, have been traumatized, uh, when people, uh, you know, have been oppressed, uh, it can make them mad, it can make them angry, it can make them crazy, uh, it can make them react in different ways. We don't justify that, but we say that uh, a Muslim who is uh, uh, angry, frustrated, uh, uh, crazy, can be manipulated, and if they do things that are wrong, uh, it's wrong. Wrong is wrong and right is right. Uh, but let us, let's, let's say uh, that um, we have to understand that uh, a person uh, who is put in a certain position, if you put a rat in a cage, if you put a cat in the corner, uh, if, you, if you corner a wild beast, how are they going to react? They're going to react instinctively. So I say that there are some Muslims who unfortunately have been placed in those conditions and they have reacted in a negative way, but Islam has nothing to do with that. And in the same way that uh, the, Oklahoma, uh, the Oklahoma bomber, okay, he was a Christian, a right-wing Christian, but we don't say, you understand me, that Christianity has anything to do with that. I mean, Hitler was a Christian, but we don't say that, we, that uh, Christianity had anything to do with that. Stay tuned and we will be back after the short break. <laughs>